Welcome to EDUC 485, Critical Organizational Studies. My name is Mark Vermillion, and I'm the Director of the Organizational Leadership and Learning Degree Program here at Wichita State University. I'm really excited about this class. I'm really excited about the OLO program. Um, a lot of that excitement is kind of born out of my educational background. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have kind of a unique educational background that's primarily been in uh, history, industrial and organizational psychology, uh, sociology, especially organizational sociology, uh, criminology, things like that. And I was able to work outside of academia for a number of years. I have a background in uh, law enforcement and was was lucky enough to be a part of some Department of Defense uh, organizational initiatives throughout the world. So I'm very excited to bring a lot of different ideas and influences to the courses I teach. And this particular class is sort of the epitome of that. And, that, and, and I hope that throughout the particular semester, I'm able to share some different ideas from people that are far smarter than myself so that we can better understand organizations. And you can see how your leadership philosophy is going to fit into this organizational structure. In terms of classes, not just this class, but also, you know, all of the classes that I teach, it's, it's really a, a simple philosophy, right? We come together, we do our work, we do things on time, we do them at a high level. And ultimately, you're going to get out of this class whatever you put into it. And that's not meant to be negative or sound terse or anything like that. But once you've identified what you want to get out of the course, if you want to push yourself, then that opportunity to learn more and push yourself is in this, that opportunity is there in this class. If you say, look, I just want to get a, an A, a B, or a particular grade, then you have the syllabus, you know exactly how to do that. And that's kind of what I'm talking about is each person is going to enter into a course or maybe even higher education at different points in their life. And an undergraduate degree is, is, is a long process and you need to identify kind of internally what your goals are. And then that's kind of how it's gonna shape the influence or the engagement you have with this particular course. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We all have different moments in our lives where we're able to uh, sit down and think about what we want out of different things. And that's, that's just kind of my life philosophy for better or for worse on a lot of different things is the work that you do in this course is going to be based out of really what you want to get out of it. I thought I'd take time in this sort of introduction and um, welcome presentation to really talk about some course logistics. Okay, this is an online course, as you know, and there are no required meetings. So even though it's online, we're not going to meet at any particular day or time. Um, and as a result, everything has already been posted on the Blackboard shell. I do this ahead of time, so all the modules, all the quizzes, everything's up there. It's not released at different points throughout the semester, so if you want to sit down and go through the entire course in a week, there is no penalty for turning anything in early. Uh, if you want to take you know, the, the entire uh, semester that we're involved with this course and use the due dates that are provided in this syllabus, then you're more than welcome to do that. You have the autonomy to engage with the course as it works best with your schedule. Now, that being said, there are due dates that are going to be listed in the syllabus, so you need to be aware of those. But I don't have any requirement that you have to work on the courses at particular days or times or anything like that. The class is, consists of really three major parts. One is the syllabus, and a lot of people really kind of skip over the syllabus, which I understand. but but Think about it this way. All the information that you need to be successful is located in that one document. All the expectations, what it is that you're supposed to be doing, how you structure your time, a lot of resources uh, for information for both WSU and also associated with me and the program, it's all listed in there. So I encourage you to look over it. You do also have a syllabus quiz that must be completed uh, within the first week or so and you have to do that before you can move on to the course. So make sure to look at the syllabus and look at the syllabus quiz. The class does have three course modules. And then there is a final project. And the final project is a debriefing project um, where you kind of look back and reflect on the, the semester and the course and the material. Okay. There is no required textbook. 
This is a no cost course. And what I mean by that is, of course, you have to the tuition and fees and those types of things. But we don't have any additional cost for books or textbooks or anything like that. I've never found a textbook that really works well with any of my courses. Uh, I try to bring a variety of different points of view and different forms of content into a course. And the textbook industry is a great industry, but it does not necessarily provide me or any of the classes that I ever teach um, with really what I need you all to know and to be successful. Um, I also am a firm believer that the reason we only have three course modules is because I want you to have the time and space to think about the information. If I bog you down with, say, six modules, then it's very difficult to really invest, understand, and apply, in my personal view, all of the information because you're so busy trying to do all these readings, trying to absorb all this information. You really don't have a time to kind of sit with it and think how you might really use this stuff outside the classroom. So that's the reason we only have three course modules. It's also the reason we don't have a textbook. Now, we do have some required readings but those are all going to be hyperlinked within the course notes. And those course notes are already provided, they're already posted on the Blackboard shelf. Let's talk a little bit about the logistics of each module. Whether it's my um, love of structure and consistency, or lack of creativity, or maybe some combination of the two, all of our modules are going to be structured in the exact same way. And they are going to include notes, a small quiz, and an assignment. Every module, whether it's module one, module three, it's going to look and feel the exact same way. Okay, the notes, um, I actually use Google Slides, and so then I download them into PowerPoint so it's easier to post on the Blackboard. But these notes are going to be the quote-unquote textbook, if you will, for the course. All right? And actually, I even try to write them because there are no, after this audio lecture, there are no additional audio lectures. Um, in, in the past, I've recorded a lot of these different types of things. And, and students preferred uh, just to kind of read through at their leisure the notes. That's the feedback I received, which is completely understandable. But I wanted to evolve my notes. So they almost, so each PowerPoint slide reads almost like a, a small little page of a book or a pamphlet or something like that. So you get the gist of the information, right? And again, as I said before, any required readings, and there's not that many, but any required readings, they're going to be hyperlinked within those notes. Now, here's a little quirk. Because I use Google Slides to create everything, um, for you to access the hyperlinks in a particular reading, for a particular reading, you must be in presentation mode. All right, we are in presentation mode currently, right? This, this is not presentation mode, and you wouldn't be able to get into it. Now, if this was a hyperlink, now that we're in presentation mode, you would be able to click on that, and it would take you outside of it to a new particular reading. Okay? We do have a small quiz associated with each module. It's usually 10 to 13 multiple choice questions. These questions are going to be taken directly from the notes. Now, some of the questions are going to be more kind of memorization and rote memory, maybe definitions, those types of things. Uh, and then some of the questions are going to be application, right? So maybe you have to know a definition uh, to choose the appropriate example from multiple choice answers A, B, C, or D. Okay, so application and then some basic awareness. Th that's generally what the, the quizzes are going to be like. And then finally, there's an assignment associated with the topic of each module. And this is going to vary based on each module, right? And each assignment is really this, it, it's going to be an extension of the content. It's going to be about application and applying, you know, some ideas from whatever that particular module was. I'm not necessarily having you sit down and write five to seven pages of, of different kind of essays and things like that. I'm not interested in that. I'm more interested in you uh, being able to think about the information digest it, and then apply it to some aspect of your personal or professional life. Okay? That's how each of the three modules are going to be built. The final project for the class, as I said before, is just a debriefing project where you reflect back on the course and the material that we covered. I want to take a moment 
um, and just talk a little bit. I know the word critical and critical organizational studies in the title can sometimes be one of those polarizing words. And I just wanted to take a moment to kind of address the elephant in the room. Our job within this class is really just to understand organizations on an in-depth level, right? And look at the look at the name of the course, Critical Organizational Studies. So we're going to be studying organizations, and we're going to do that in a critical way. Critical does not mean being negative. It's about looking at things below the surface, right? So we don't want to be negative. That doesn't do us any good. But we want to look below whatever is going on. Right? When people have feelings, when, when, when organizations are functioning well or they're not functioning well, sometimes you can't necessarily see the symptom. Or excuse me, you can see the symptom, but you can't necessarily see the actual problem where it comes from. And, and I think this is really important. My job is not to tell you how to think or how to behave or how to lead people at all, right? My job really is to provide you with information that you're going to choose or not choose to incorporate into your worldview and your leadership philosophy. This class is about awareness, and I really feel like that's what my purpose is, is to just provide you access and entree to information. And the reason I believe that is because our organizational leadership and learning degree program or the workforce leadership minor, they're really built off of this principle of leadership is really associated with learning, right? The more that you learn about people, about organizations, about uh, large international patterns or dynamics, then the more successful you're going to be because you have more information at your disposal. And that's why I say this really is about raising awareness. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to be going through any content that you've never heard of before. Some may. You may have had a lot of this stuff in previous courses or maybe you have previous experience, and that's completely fine. This is really about just adding information to your arsenal that you can choose to use as you become um, a leader in whatever industry that you're going to be a part of. I really encourage you, though, to try and push yourself. And a lot of people talk about, I want to push myself, I want to grind, I want to be the best possible person I can. And, and that's easy to say, but it's also hard to do. So I'm really encouraging to push yourself really to think deeply about context, about information, and really try to connect some of these ideas that you're going to be talking about or examining to the way that you as an individual see leadership. The reason you're part of this course is because you want to learn more about organizations. You're part, it, maybe it's part of your major, your minor, or you're interested in terms of how to develop yourself as a leader. right? So the more that you can connect these ideas to your leadership philosophy, the more successful you're going to be. 100% of you all are going to be in personal or professional situations where you have to lead others. And this includes leading yourself. I know that sounds sort of unique, but oftentimes leading yourself is a very, very important and distinct skill set. And again, the more that you know about people, the world around us, the, the world at large, wherever they talk about globalization or the international community or things that are going on in North America or if we're talking about Eastern Europe or Africa, the more you know about the world, the more you know about people, and the more that you know about your organization, then the better prepared you are to be a, an effective leader. All right, And that just, it, to me, it makes sense because the more that you learn and understand, then the more you're able to impact individuals moving forward. And that's really what this class is about. It's about raising awareness, and it's about trying to add a few things to your arsenal so that you can be a better leading mo moving forward. So the rest of the semester, I want you to go through things, get to work, do the type of work that you want to be involved with, do quality work, and you set the quality standards on that work. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that throughout the semester, then please feel free to reach out to me as, as much as possible, and I will follow up with you, and we'll do whatever we can to assist. I hope you have a great semester, and I'll talk to you later.